Howdy guys and welcome back to a bit of a different style of video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming. Nowadays, it's kind of hard to imagine a world with limited internet uses, like even let's say 20 years ago. A world without downloadable games and content, post-release patches, and TikTok. These are all things that have only really become mainstream household concepts, apart from a few outliers, within the last decade or so. At least on consoles anyway. But Nintendo actually had their own satellite peripheral starting all the way back in April of 1995, which could actually do most of these things. Heck, that's before even I was born. Meet the Satellaview, the Japanese exclusive peripheral for the Super Famicom. Some of you might remember I had briefly touched on this accessory back in my Super Mario Odyssey Lost Bits video, since that game now has a costume for Mario that was inspired by an old Satellaview advertisement. So, what is the Satellaview? Well, as I mentioned, the Satellaview was a satellite peripheral for the Super Famicom which was jointly developed by Nintendo and St. Giga, a radio subsidiary of satellite TV station WowWow, wow, which basically took care of server maintenance and management. With the purchase of a Satellaview, a BSX cartridge, a BS tuner, and a monthly subscription fee, Super Famicom owners were able to receive special Nintendo data broadcast from a satellite that was geosynchronized above Japan and display it on their TV. These data broadcasts included things like special exclusive games, digital magazines, and game data, which I guess was an early form of DLC. For example, some Satellaview games and magazines featured streamed voice data which was known as Soundlink. This gave the existing games and magazines high quality voice audio which would give games like this Legend of Zelda game voice acting, and would turn the magazines into something closer to a radio show or podcast. Like I listed earlier, there were quite a few things you had to buy to make this possible, so it was quite expensive. The Satellaview system, BSX pack, and 8 megabit memory card were sold for around $150. The BS tuner would cost about $300 to own, or $50 to lease for a 6 month term, and again, the additionally required membership fee, which since I couldn't find an actual price anywhere, let's just assume it was around $10 a month. So basically, to own everything and use the Teleview services for one year, after adjusting for inflation, it would have cost roughly $860 in today's US dollars. Pretty pricey, and this of course assumes that you already owned an actual satellite receiving dish. But despite the high cost of entry, St. Giga has reported that the Satellaview had made its way into over 116,000 households in Japan by March of 1997. Just like the regular broadcast TV we have now, which itself is dying in popularity, certain Satellaview broadcasts were only available at certain times in a day. So if you wanted to add the extra sound link functionality in your games or magazines in July of 1997, you would have had to play the game between 6 and 8 p.m. local time. So unlike most streaming services now where you can watch or play anything on demand, with the Satellaview sometimes you had to keep an eye on the time. Another aspect similar to that of traditional magazines or TV, the Satellaview broadcasts were only available for a set duration of time. So certain broadcast magazines and games were only available for a few months or weeks, or sometimes less. This however was a newer concept for video games. For the most part, at this time, buying a game cartridge meant you owned the game for as long as the cart would last. But with the Satellaview, you could only download these games for a limited time. So unless you had the games downloaded and saved onto a memory pack, once the games stopped being broadcast, you couldn't get them ever again. Because of this, many of the games have since been lost to time in their original state with many of their original functions. But thankfully, as you probably know, Nintendo has some pretty passionate fans and collectors that have since managed to restore many of the games as ROMs to be as close to the original as possible. It's honestly really remarkable that they did this. Hats off to those that kept the games saved on their memory packs to be preserved for the rest of us. Otherwise, these games would have truly been lost forever. Also, score one for team emulation. As cool as the digital magazines and additional content was, I know most of you are probably more interested in the Lost Zelda games than, let's say, the Otaku Man Beauty magazine. So let's go through some of the games, which range from pretty cool and fun to Mahjong and Pachinko. As far as I could find, there was about 114 distinct games that were broadcast and available for download, with only a fraction of them still playable in this day and age. 
I'll only go over the games that I thought were interesting, and the ones that I was able to understand how to play. I don't speak Japanese! Other games, like Wario's Woods and The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, were just downloadable versions of their respective games with some minor differences. As such, I won't be going into too much detail with these games, but I think it's pretty interesting that with them, Nintendo still included some DRM measures, even back then. For example, with the downloaded Satellaview version of A Link to the Past, the game would have had an internal play counter that would tick down from 5 to 0 each time the game was played. Once reaching 0, the game would lock itself and would need to be re-downloaded in order to be played again. This is something I'm sure people didn't appreciate back then, just like they don't now. Anyways, back to the games, but before we get to what most people would call proper games, I think it's important to first discuss the game's BIOS on the Satellaview BSX cart. Although people refer to it as the BIOS, there is a little more to it than just being a basic input and output system. The BIOS is stylized like an Earthbound style RPG, and it serves as a hub to all the different features of the Satellaview. It lets you input your name, choose between, uh, Steve and Stevette, walk around a town, and it had this weird computer guy. The BIOS even had its own title, BSX, the story of the town whose name was stolen. In the town, players could visit the buildings which would allow them to access the content that was available at that time of day. But unfortunately, since this is just emulated and there are no more signals broadcast for this device, this game is just a hollow, basically useless shell of what it once was. Alright, and now let's move on to the actual games. First up are two sequels to the original F-Zero, F-Zero Grand Prix 1 and 2. It's crazy to think new F-Zero games were still being released on the Super Famicom when the N64 was already in full swing. There's not much to say here, it's classic F-Zero remixed with some new courses, visuals, and cars. Like the Blue Falcon being changed to this year car known as Blue Thunder. Gotta go fast. Next up is a collection of minigames featuring everybody's favorite pink boy Kirby titled Kirby's Toy Box. To this day, these minigames haven't been officially released anywhere else. These minigames are really mini games. There's a range ball, which is just some sort of pachinko tic tac toe game. Baseball, in which you just smack little Kirby with a bat and hope he falls into a good hole. Cannonball, which pits two mechas that look like Kirby's friend Rick against each other. Guru Guru Ball, which translates to balls round and round, which is a ski ball esque game where you have to try and get Kirby to land in a certain hole to get points. Hoshi Kuzushi, which translates to Star Break, a pretty basic breakout style game. Pachinko, just Pachinko and Pinball, which I found the most fun with. There is actually one more minigame that was part of this toy box collection that is still lost as of the making of this video called Ball Rally. Surprise surprise, it was another pachinko style game dealing with Kirby as a ball. This game would have had the player try to guide a Kirby ball through an obstacle course by pressing A to extend and retract certain platforms. As simple as these minigames are, I think it would be really cool to see Nintendo re-release them, even if just as a mobile game. Next up is Radical Dreamers, which is a text-based visual novel that serves as a sort of side story to Chrono Trigger. This again wasn't released outside of Japan, and it was a Satellaview exclusive. Now, I haven't played Chrono Trigger myself yet, so I couldn't really get into the story, but it's still really cool that this exists and has even been translated to English by fans. There are actually three more Chrono Trigger games that were available for download. The first, Jet Bike Special, is just the Jet Bike minigame from Chrono Trigger re-released as a standalone game, and the other two aren't really games, as they are just basically an encyclopedia on the game's characters and enemies, and a sound library. And now, onto some Satellaview exclusive Zelda games. The first of these is just titled BS The Legend of Zelda, with the BS meaning Broadcast Satellaview, not anything else. This game is a 16-bit remake of the original Legend of Zelda game, but with a completely altered overworld and remixed dungeons. So even if you've played the original Legend of Zelda, this game still has enough to warrant another playthrough. It's a real shame this game wasn't released elsewhere, cause these updated graphics look great. 
As you might have noticed, I'm not playing as Link here either, but instead Steve from the BSX BIOS game. That's because this game actually lets you choose if you wanted to play as a boy or a girl, or if you wanted to keep it as close to the original as possible, Link himself. The other otherwise unreleased Zelda game is known as The Legend of Zelda Ancient Stone Tablets. And just like the previous game, this is again another Master Quest style of game, but this time for A Link to the Past. This game, while very similar to A Link to the Past, does have some differences here and there, like not being able to play as Link, but instead, again, a boy or a girl reskin. This game was split up into four weekly episodes, each with a different objective. You also don't have access to the entirety of the overworld right away, as paths are conveniently blocked off. I guess so you couldn't get too sidetracked in your one hour of play. Two dungeons were playable in each weekly broadcast, and with the final fourth broadcast, most of the overworld was accessible. In the last broadcast, Zelda actually follows you around, which is kinda different I guess. Throughout the game, there will often be some dialogue scripts that you can read, but I never really paid much attention to them. Another awesome game that I'm glad was preserved and translated. Before we end off with the Satellaview Mario games, there are a few other one-offs I'd like to go over first. Kaizu Chojin Shubibin Man Zero is a super cool side-scrolling beat-em-up that seems to take several cues from the Mega Man series including the overall aesthetics, having a blue hero, and even a discount Dr. Light. I actually had a blast playing this one. This game was only available via the Satellaview until recently when 20 years after the game was first broadcast, a limited amount of physical copies were made in Japan. I definitely recommend checking this one out if you can. Next is another Japanese exclusive series titled Sute Hakun. These games put you in control of Hakun who can suck in blocks and colorful liquid kind of like a mosquito. Using the blocks and the liquids, you have to try and guide Hakun to the crystal shards in each level. Simple and fun. The next game is probably the craziest one in this video. It's basically a top-down shooter themed around the BSX BIOS game. You play as the TV guy and shoot lightning bolts and memory packs at whales, dudes coming out of a sewer, buildings with eyes, you name it. I am so happy this exists. Alright, what would a Nintendo peripheral be without some sort of Mario tie-in, right? Well, the Satellaview had at least five distinct Mario games that were broadcast. First is a Mario Paint pseudo-sequel that basically just gave it joypad supports. Nothing too crazy. Then there is an Excite Bike remake sequel thing titled Excite Bike Bun Bun Mario Battle Stadium. It plays really similar to Excite Bike, but now has Mario, Luigi, Peach, Wario, Toad, and Koopas as cyclists. Man, I suck at this game! Next up is a Mario version of Same Game, a game in which multiple tiles of the same sprite must be selected and removed. The goal of the game is simple, make sure no tiles are left. If you've watched my Mario Party 1 Lost Bits video, you may remember that this is basically the same game as the Same Game minigame that was scrapped from that game. BS Super Mario Collection is exactly what it sounds like, a collection of Mario games that was again released episodically. Each episode featured excerpts from the game most of us know as Super Mario All-Stars. Episode 1 had a few worlds from the original Super Mario Bros., Episode 2 and 3 had worlds 1 through 6 from Super Mario Bros. 3, and the last installment had some worlds from Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. As of the making of this video, only data for the second and third installments have been recovered, with only some screenshots left of the first installment. Fingers crossed that the other installments get unearthed sometime. And lastly, capping off this list of Satellaview games is BS Super Mario USA, which as I mentioned in my Lost Bits video on Super Mario Bros. 2, is what the game we know as Super Mario Bros. 2 is known as in Japan. This game featured the same gameplay, graphics, and several levels from the Super Mario All-Stars version of Super Mario Bros. 2. However, there are a few new features here and a new plot, which is presented as a sequel to the original game. Basically, Ward returns with Birdo, Triclide, Fry Guy, and Claw Grip, and overthrows the King of Subcon, or something. I guess at least it beats Bowser Kidnaps Peach. As with many of the other Satellaview games, this one also was released in installments. 
The gameplay here is much the same, but now there are golden Mario 1-Up statues scattered throughout the levels to collect. Also, every once in a while, a character portrait will appear, and apparently with the sound link feature in this game, the characters would narrate events as they occur in the game. At the end of a character's dialogue, sometimes something happens like all of the enemies on screen turn into bombs, or you being forced to switch to another character. If you're looking for a reason to replay some levels in Super Mario 2 with a twist, then this is the game for you. The Satellaview was, and still is, a very interesting Nintendo peripheral. But as all good things must come to an end, so did the Satellaview service in June of 2000. And just like that, many of the games were no longer officially distributed. And the only reason we can still see and even play these games nowadays is thanks to the preservationists that were able to dump many of the games online. This brings up the modern debate of emulation, and the need for physical media versus going into a digital-only age in which I feel more and more games, like the PT demo, may become lost. Anyways guys, with that concludes this first, what I will unofficially call Tetrabit Original, and I hope you enjoyed it. I do plan on making more of these one-offs, or videos that otherwise don't really fit under any of my other series, so if you enjoyed this, please let me know with a like down below. If you're new here and you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my video where I talk about some bizarre video game carts by clicking on the card right here. I think you'll enjoy it as well. And if you want to stay even more up to date with me and the channel, be sure to subscribe here as well as swing by my other social media things which will all be linked in the description below. But as always guys, thank you all so much for watching today and for all of your amazing support, and I will see you in a bit.